the breaking news tonight, an impromptu, an impromptu press conference held by Magic Johnson where he stuns the world, announcing he is stepping down as president of basketball operations of the Lakers. We've been told that Magic is, is once again holding another in, uh, impromptu press conference, and he has relayed to members of the media that the owner of the Lakers, Jeannie Buss, will not be attending tonight's game. Magic has told the media he did not inform Jeannie Buss of this decision, did not inform Rob Lincoln, certainly not any of the players, including LeBron James. This will go down in history as one of the strangest moments in the NBA. Earlier tonight, here was Magic at that press conference. And um, so today, I'm going to step down as the president. And um, I think I don't want to, her and I have such an amazing relationship. And I think that um, she gave me full power to do what I wanted to do. But I think that uh, with her and I, I want to always preserve our relationship and, and love her. And then I think that I had more fun when I was able to be the big brother and ambassador to everybody. You know, I thought about Dwayne Wade retiring tomorrow, and I can't even tweet it out or can't be there. Uh, Serena Williams called me a week ago and said, will you mentor me and be on my advisory board? And I said, yeah, I'm going to do that. You know, and so when Ben Simmons called, and we went through the proper channels, and they made me look like the bad guy out of that situation, but I didn't do anything wrong but do everything right. I was thinking about all those times, all guys who want me to mentor them or be a part of their lives, and I can't even do that. I had more fun on the other side than on this side, because now, tomorrow, I would have to affect somebody's life, livelihood in their life. It's, 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 it's a difficult decision. You know, I cried before I came here. I'm about, about to cry now. But I... It's hard when you love an organization the way I love this organization. It's hard when you love a person like I love Jeannie. And I, I don't want to disappoint her. I don't want to, you know, we love Luke, you know. So I got to make a decision, right? And that's a tough thing. But I'm good with where I am. I'm, I'm happy. I want to do the things I used to do. So I had to weigh both situations, and so this is better for me. Do I think Rob is the right GM? That's, that's a decision that Jeannie has to make. You know, I work well with him. I had no problem with him. Um, now, they said he had some back. I don't know about that, right? And so a lot of my Asian friends had called. So, um, but Jeannie has to make all the calls. That's not calls for me to make. This is her organization. Um, I work well with them. That's all I, I was concerned with. And um, again, uh, we had to get to know each other, and we did that, and we worked well together. You can connect to me. Let's get more perspective on this huge breaking news story. Magic Johnson shocking the world, announcing his resignation as president of basketball operations. We turn to a man who's covered the NBA for more than three decades. He now writes for us on NBA.com. Steve Ashburner joining us here. Ash, in terms of the things you have seen and covered throughout the course of your NBA career, a man of the magnitude of Magic Johnson with the star power that he still has, even decades after retiring from playing, where does this rank among those strange moments that you have covered in this league. Hi, Jared. Uh, thanks for having me on. You know, um, this league never uh, it, it, it never ceases to amaze when it comes to its flair for the dramatic. Um, those of us of a certain age and experience remember exactly where we were when Magic Johnson made an announcement one time. And I'm wondering whether we're going to remember this one. Obviously, not nearly as weighty, not... Um, you know, anything like that. This is a job. But uh, this is surprising, shocking. Um, 
you know, he's the only guy maybe that could compel us quite like this. And, uh, you know, he amazed us and surprised us after that decision in 1991, and maybe he'll amaze us and surprise us again. But right now it's it's hard to see um, the path forward um, for him, but certainly even for the Lakers. Steve, what do you take from some of the comments made by Magic Johnson tonight where he says he wants to be more of a big brother, more of – a guy who can be a friend with players in the league. He says he didn't like the fines and the tampering accusations. He didn't like the backstabbing. What did you take from all of that? Yeah, with all due respect, um, I didn't. I don't put a lot of weight on those things. They don't seem to balance the scale for our, you know for him leaving a franchise and, and a job that, you know, a franchise he loves and a job that, you know, was so instrumental to getting that, that, that team back to where he thinks it needs to be and where so many of us who have been around the NBA for decades uh, have grown accustomed to where it used to be. Um, you know, tampering troubles and, and mentoring rival uh, teams, athletes, that, that seems small compared to the, the position he had, the, the traction he got when, when he got LeBron James to sign. You know, yes, there, there are names on the other side of the resume, um, just in the, in the two-plus years that he's, he's done the job. Julius Randle, D'Angelo Russell, um, Zubac, um, Lou Williams. You know, so, you know, it hasn't been uh, without its bumps, but you got LeBron James to come. And, and yet they didn't get a second superstar for LeBron to play with this past season. But, you know, in essence, Magic was that superstar. Right. And, you know, and that was, the, that was the tandem that you thought would, okay, they're going to roll up their sleeves and they're going to work hard this summer and, and uh, onward and upward. So, yeah, I, I have a hard time balancing, you right. know, those objections. And, frankly, you could make a case. If he loves the Lakers as much as he says, and, and we have no reason to doubt that, he could have been the guy to, to terminate the coaching staff or whatever it is that's been alluded to here and then resign and sort of take that bullet for the team and let them move on with a clean slate. It could have worked that way, too. Yeah, and Ash, it begs the question here, for a team that was in as bad of shape as they are, just in terms of their own history, six consecutive years of missing out in the playoffs, and you look on all their years prior to the six-year stretch, they'd only missed the playoffs five total years, and that dates back to the Minneapolis days. But with Magic leaving now, does that put even more of a stain on the organization, make it even harder for this organization to have to go out and recruit top-notch free agents this summer or manufacture some sort of trade to bring in that second star that Magic alluded to this team desperately needing? Well, it certainly um, you know, leaves them in a position of turmoil. And when you've got you know, in the same building – a, a, an organization that seems to be giving a united front, seems to have overachieved this season so far and still might have some tricks up its sleeves. And, you know, we're talking about the Clippers. Um, you know, it, it, it's a much more competitive situation, I think, than maybe we would have thought with the Lakers' history and Magic Johnson, um, you know, going to bat with free agents. I think that the free agents who might want Los, Los Angeles and the opportunities and the climate and everything else that market offers – uh, they can look at the Clippers and say, I don't need that drama. I've got a, a very solid basketball organization here to, uh, to look at, and, and I think it, it's, it's made things tougher on that front for the, for the Lakers. And, and if you're of the belief that Magic Johnson is the greatest Laker of all time, which you very well could make that argument, if he doesn't want to be there, why should anybody who has zero affiliation with the Lakers want to be there? It just makes it for a very tenuous offseason, in which it was already going to be the most important offseason in Laker history. And now this, Ash. Yeah, I mean, and, and we all think of, you know, I mean, they're, they're twin, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. And it's not just the timing of their careers, it's their competitive natures. And this just does not mesh with our image of Magic as, as a competitor that he would choose this time to, uh, to step down, you know, some sort of orderly transition, something that would be announced, you know, in advance, uh, an end date put on his term, that, that's different. But for this to happen now with, with, you know, at the very end of this regular season with so much uh, in front of them, um, yeah, it, it, it just makes you wonder. And, uh, 
I don't know. You know, I'm going to, I'm just going to put this out there too. I just wonder how much is this going to stick to LeBron James? Yeah. Look, LeBron is a lightning rod, right? And wherever he goes, there's drama, there's passive aggressiveness. Uh, this to me would seem to be the biggest storm cloud yet that has rolled in when LeBron has, uh, has relocated. No and, question. And what do we make of that? Yeah, no question. That's a great point there, Ash. Steve Ashburner, check out his work at NBA.com. I want to read a tweet here from Bill Orham, who covers the Lakers currently for The Athletic. He tweets out, nearly two hours after he spontaneously stepped to the podium, a door leading to the loading dock swung open, a cold wind went through Staples Center, and Magic said, bye for good this time. It is one of the strangest nights in NBA history, and we will continue our coverage as the Lakers, by the way, are moments away from tipping off game number 82 of their season. we got plenty more to come on this edition of Game Time Live. The National Anthem is underway there at Staples Center. We'll continue talking with Griffin Czar about Magic Johnson stepping down. <laughs> 